the segment, we move on to hot topics in the NCAA. We're going to talk about the new BCS rankings that just came out on Sunday. Jason, I want to hear your thoughts. Well, I think they got it right. Surprisingly, for a Pac-10 fan, I think they got it right. Auburn deserves to be number one right now. I think beating a highly overrated LSU team, however, they have played the tougher schedule right now. Oregon is in the right spot at number two. You gotta wait till the end of the season, till all the computer data is in. Wait till all the teams have won the games. I don't even think the rankings should come out till later in the year. Um, right now, the everything seems to be right. I think uh, Boise State's in the right place, TCU, and so on down the line. Good point, Jack. I agree with Jason that the rankings, BCS rankings, shouldn't come out till later in the season. That's for sure. That's just that's not right to start out way ahead of everybody else. But I was honestly I was a little surprised that Auburn. Um, Jump Boise State and Oregon and became the number one team. Now, obviously, they're a good team, but I was I was a little surprised at that. You know, honestly, to me, it'd be a little interesting to find out. Uh, I like to do an interview with those computers. I think there's eight computers. I like to <laughs> interview just one of them, kind of get inside their head just a little bit, you know, and see what they're thinking. And, you know, because I can sell that information to uh, some top bidder around them, you know, top bidder, and they can really, you know, heighten their chances. You know, I, I look at this Auburn team and all the scoring they've been doing, you know, and I, I wonder, you know, is this the same school that, like, two years ago beat Mississippi State 3-2? to two? You know, I, I, I hardly get my arms around a team that scores that many points based on what they've done in the past. Uh, uh, so, the other thing in the BCS that kind of surprised me a little bit was Oklahoma dropping to 11th. You know, I don't think there's 10 teams out there, honestly, that can beat Oklahoma. So I was a little surprised at that drop. Other than that, I think the BCS polls are pretty much right on yeah, without sounding too redundant, I mean, I don't want to echo a lot of what you guys said because I agree with most of it. Um, no, I, I think uh, the top two teams, I mean, for all the complaints about the BCS, which I'm not a BCS fan myself, I'd rather go with the playoff format. But I think as of today, the top two teams in the nation are on par to play with each other. And uh, maybe I said that wrong. Not to play with each other, <laughs> to play each other. But... Uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, I mean, what a great matchup that would be, which I think is the best quarterback with Cam Newton versus the best running back in LaMichael James. So I think they got it right as of today. What will be interesting is if, if an Auburn or an Oregon loses, will that propel a Boise State or a non-qualifying uh, 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 team in there, like maybe a TCU? It'll be interesting to see what the nation, how the nation reacts to that. I actually don't think that'll happen. I think uh, as long as there is undefeated teams from major conferences... Right. They will continue to jump Boise State and TCU right. until there are no more undefeated teams. We could end up with a national championship of a Boise State TCU matchup if everybody else has one loss. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I think a, <clears throat> an Auburn Oregon matchup would be a treat for the fans out there. Now, that could Absolutely. be, I guess you, you, can, you can see that being a 60 to 50 yeah. affair. There's not going to be a lot of defense <laughs> no, in that game. That would be fun. It'd be a definitely an offensive showdown yeah. for sure. Yeah. The Pac-10, as we know, is going to disappear next year with the addition of Colorado and Utah, moving to the Pac-12, and the conference has made a realignment with the North and the South. Would you like to hear your thoughts on the new realignment that's been announced? I didn't even know there was one. <laughs> um, no, actually, uh, no, I, I, I was more along the lines of the, the zipper. Um, I thought the uh, where you just split your rivals, I thought that was the, the fairest way, but it seems like the, the only two options that were really out there was the, the Pac-10 North schools, and they were either going to be with Cal and Stanford, which is how it is today, or they were going to be with the, the two newcomers. And I think they, I think they did a good job. Um, I think ultimately in the Pac-10 for the Northern Division, if that's what we're calling it, they need some type of California influence in there. There's a lot of uh, uh, the Northern schools really rely on the California area for recruiting grounds. And at least now with having that California presence in there, you can at least go to the California recruit and tell them that they can at least play at least one game we know of a year they can at least play in that home state, which may sway a recruit. I think if anything we learned from the Big 12, which is a very similar situation, they have the four Texas schools and the two Oklahoma schools in the south. Well, a lot of the northern schools don't even play in Texas, and it's hard for them to recruit the state of Texas, which is where you should be getting most of your recruits. Like, for instance, this year, Missouri does not play in Texas. Anyways, I think it, it creates a, a recruiting disadvantage, and if you look at the Big 12, again, as a template of that, uh, the, North, the North Division usually struggles. So I think by them adding uh, uh, the Southern Cal or the Northern California schools, as well as those, that TV market, I think has balanced the league. I like the TV revenue and the, uh, the actual just the revenue sharings in general, puts them all in an equal balance. 
And I also think that the, just far as a competitive standpoint, I think it's pretty. I think it aligned nicely. I think in the north you've got, uh, you know, with Oregon, Oregon State, as well as Stanford, and in the south you got, you know, an eighth or ninth ranked Utah team, USC, and an Arizona team. I mean, I think that's an equal balance. So all in all, again, I would prefer the zipper, but the way that they have it now, I'm for it. I think it's fair. Well, let me come back to you if you want to put some more thought into your. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm done. Well, Jason, go ahead. What do you? What do you... <laughs> we get to talk. <laughs> Well, I think Joel said it, pretty much said it all. However, I think that the Northwest schools now are actually at a competitive disadvantage. I think the revenue sharing isn't going to come online for a couple of years now, and UCLA and USC are going to receive additional money until the Pac-10 network is up and running. Once the Pac-10 network is up and running and the additional revenue comes into the conference at $175 million or so, then it will start to get split equally. Until that time, UCLA and USC are going to receive e extra money every year until the revenue goals are met for the conference. As far as recruiting goes, I think Oregon is at the least disadvantage of all the schools in the North Division because they're now recruiting nationwide um, from Chip Kelly. I mean, mm -hmm. He has turned their recruiting around. Uh, Washington probably will not be as affected, but the rest of the schools, Washington State and Oregon State are in trouble right now, I think, mm -hmm. with this new but would you lineup. But would you agree that it's much better having the Northern California schools in there or, or if they went with the other version of the, of the Utah and Colorado joining. Well, once the Pac-10 championship game mm -hmm. starts next year, I think the Northern schools would have been better off with Colorado and Utah, being that they might have had an easier way to get to the Pac-10 12, Pac-12 title game. Mm -hmm. um, with Stanford and Cal, you have two, I would say, mid-level Pac-10 teams right now, and they're getting better. And Col Utah's very good. Colorado's bad and that you'd have an easier way to get to the title game if they were in your division. Well you think Colorado now will give Washington State someone to compete with? <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to look at it. They still won't win. <laughs> I'm positive, though. Is that a tie at the end of the day? We'll have a new cup name after that. <laughs> Jack, what are your thoughts on the on the alignment that we well, Anytime you have a realignment and you have new teams that you have new schedules you have to 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 meet uh, and go play that you haven't played before, you're going to have some people upset and people are going to complain. It's all, you're not going to cut that out. And yeah, there might be a down check for the, for the Northwest schools in California recruiting, but you know, like Jason said earlier, Oregon State, schools like Oregon Oregon State, I don't, they're, yeah, they realize, they get the brunt of their recruits from California, but like Jason said, they've gone nationwide. Oregon State, Oregon for example now, you know, they've gone into Texas, they've got Michael James, they've got Darren Thomas, their quarterback, they got Josh Huff at wide receiver. They've got some kids on the bench that are pretty good. Oregon State, meanwhile, they've got the Rogers brothers out of Texas. I don't know where Oregon State would be without the Rogers brothers right now. Of course, right now they only got one Rogers brother, but still. Uh, so I'm not sure that I'm not sure uh, that the, this realignment is going to hurt uh, some of the Northwest schools as much as they could, since they they kind of helped us out well, earlier by focusing the recruiting on outside of California just a little bit. So not quite. I don't think they'll get hurt that bad. Okay. And, and as I said, additional revenue, uh, new new markets, Salt Lake City market, Denver market. So I think it's a it's a it's a big win for the Pac-10. Okay. Looking at the Pac-10 coaches, is there any coach out there that you think should start packing up his office? He's got time <laughs> his back. Should be where he's going to be, Joel. Not right away. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a handful you could choose from. There's uh, competitions, <laughs> right? I'm going to go, I, actually I think someone that should be on the hot seat, and I don't know, uh, I, I, you know, if you listen to message boards and whatnot, you know there's some, there's some uh, smoke there is Rick Neuheisel at UCLA. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'd be one thing if he, if he didn't get talent there, but, uh, you know, he's had three top, uh, top ten recruiting classes, and he's still not really making progress, in my opinion, um, as, as a coach. You know, this is his third year, um, he's 14 and 18, which I guess isn't that bad. But when you've got the talent that he has, I don't think he's. I don't think it's the, the progression is there. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at where he has been at Colorado and at uh, with Washington, I think both fan bases would tell you the same thing that he recruits with the best of them, but he's not an X's and O guys. He doesn't coach people up. He doesn't make good game game time decisions. Um, and you know, I think that has killed him. And the biggest thing is this year you're in year three, and look at some of the losses he's had. He's lost to Stanford 35 to zip. He's lost to Arizona 35 to 7. He's lost to Oregon 66 to 13. 
I, I'm just. Uh, but he beat Texas. <laughs> he did beat Texas, but so did Iowa State. But uh, <laughs> but on that, I mean, so I mean, where where is the the progression? I mean, I mean, the, the, I don't know. I just don't see enough there. And if I was a UCLA fan, I would be calling for his head. Me personally. Jack, who do you put on the hot seat? Well, I think if you're going to talk about coaches on the hot seat, I think I think one candidate's got to be uh, Dennis Erickson at Arizona State. Um, you know, Dennis, everywhere he's been, he's he's done the program well. Uh, he was at Miami, great teams at Oregon State, um, uh, Washington State, even even Idaho did better when Erickson was there. So, uh, and initially at uh, when he went to Arizona State, uh, the team did well. They went, I believe, ten and three the first year. Went to a Holiday Bowl, great season. But after that, they've been into a, like a free fall. So. Um, um, you know, it seems like every season the pollsters come out and they talk about Arizona State, they're going to be really good this year, and every year they kind of underachieve. So I don't know how much longer that could continue. You know, since since uh, Eric's has been here, he's 22 and 22 right now overall, and, but in the conference play, he's only 14 and 17. Mm -hmm. And that's just not going to sit well with the uh, Arizona State fan base. I, I just don't think so. So it, it may be warm and sunny down in uh, Tempe, Arizona. But uh, for Dennis Erickson, I think he might find it be, to be getting a little bit too warm. All right. Jason, you got a different coach in mind? Of, of course. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit and go with Paul Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> the, guy, the guy hasn't even won five games. I mean, Washington State is, is, again, a bad team. They're not getting better. They are not going to get getting better. a little better, Jason. Jason, they're, you said they're getting a little better. They're, well, they're losing by less. I they're guess. It, I guess that's getting better. But um, until you win games, you're not going to appease your fan base, your boosters, uh, your athletic director, and Bill Moose now as the athletic director at Washington State. He'll be looking for a new coach come fall. Um, there's no doubt about it. There's too many good coaches out there without jobs right now, and Paul Wolf is done at Washington State. Okay, there you hear it. Hot topics.